Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and this morning, uh, we'll get to some news and stuff later, don't worry, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a news video like we usually do, but I wanted to talk about a, it, it's a piece of news, but it's, it's causing a little bit of controversy, and I find this to be interesting because this isn't anything new, and I'm not sure why anybody cares. Uh, in case people aren't aware, Ocarina of Time on, or Ocarina of Time, I'm not really sure, is it Ocarina or Ocarina? You guys let me know down in the comments. Um, this game has is on the Nintendo Switch Online servers through the N64 app, and it is obviously one of the most popular games of all time, right? Most well-known, highest rated. Uh, it's also a game that is speedrun, maybe more than any other. Mario 64 is per, uh, up, up there too, and, and there's a number of titles. The speedrunning community uh, is rather interesting. Uh, and a story broke um, a, a couple days ago. Uh, this actually was written by IGN saying the speedrunner has beaten Ocarina of Time in under four minutes, uh, which is really, really cool. They're talking about Ocarina of Time, by the way, the version that happens to be on Switch. They're not just talking about speedruns in general because people have been speedrunning sub four minutes on Ocarina of Time for some time. Now, what's interesting is, isn't so much the news itself, because even though that news is incredible, uh, it's people's responses. One, not knowing what speedrunning is, and two, making some very judgmental statements that show a fundamental misunderstanding and also put our mouths and our minds and our opinions in situations where frankly they don't belong now before we get into this hey look i want to get this video to a thousand likes if we can get one thousand likes on this video a member from our comment section will win a five dollar nintendo switch eShop gift card uh beyond all of that we do have a general giveaway going on for the month of November, we call it Prime Giving because we do celebrate Thanksgiving in this household. Uh, so one lucky winner for just for being subscribed to the channel, just gotta be subscribed, uh, will win a Switch OLED bundle. So you will have the Switch OLED in it plus some other items that we'll reveal a little bit later. Uh, beyond all of that, uh, the winner can also choose a charity of their choice for us to donate $100 to in the spirit of trying to help out people in need this holiday season. So thank you guys so much for all of your support and all that, and let's get right into this video. So I still don't have my laptop here right now, so yeah, you still get the Blink TV behind me, but um, I don't really need it. Everything I need is right here on Twitter. So first up, I retweeted out um, you know, this, this, a speedrunner has beaten Ocarina of Time uh, in under four minutes by IG, and I retweeted this, uh, I think yesterday, and I said, I sort of want to make a video on the replies to this, because so many are getting mad at that someone's speedrunning, and I haven't covered speedrunning in a long time, and I feel like a good place to start, uh, is with Loki here, who responded to my thing and said, I don't understand how you call it speedrunning, when you literally just memorize enough game breaking glitches to break the game into end credits i'm not mad i just truly don't understand how is this not like cheering for hackers in an online shooter i'm honestly curious not mad i don't understand i need some explaining so i want to explain uh basically the basis of speedrunning here in general and no folks i am not a speedrunning expert i have attempted to do speedrunning many uh, god uh, over a decade ago uh, but it just wasn't my cup of tea and I wasn't enjoying it. But for those that do, more power to you. So first off, let's not compare speedrunning the game like Ocarina of Time to uh, cheering for hackers in an online shooter. Because there's a couple of key differences here. One, them speedrunning the game doesn't affect you. See, the reason that we are not supportive of supporting and, 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 and really, you know, hey, ooh, rah, rah, hackers and online shooters is because the hackers and online shooters are affecting other people. See, when you are a hacker in, say, Call of Duty Warzone and you're getting automatic, you know, snipe, headshot kills through a bot, you're affecting other people's enjoyment of the experience. You are gaining an unfair advantage over others that ruins the overall intended experience of the game. Now, you could argue, well, by people speedrunning, this ruins the overall intended experience of the game. The key difference is the only one experiencing it is the person doing it. Me speedrunning Ocarina of Time doesn't change your enjoyment of Ocarina of Time, right? But if I'm playing Splatoon online and someone's hacking in Splatoon 3, they can affect my enjoyment of that gameplay session, even though I'm not the one hacking. So that's the big key difference there. But why is it called speedrunning uh, when you're just, you know, doing a bunch of game-breaking glitches? Well, for starters, these game-breaking glitches 
Um, you know, Ocarina of Time game breaking glitches have been around for a long time, but the reason uh, that this is still considered speedrunning, because there are, by the way, different types of speedrunning. There are no glitch speedruns. So for like Loki, in case you didn't know, there's a bunch of different categories in speedrunning. There's any percent, there's no glitch, there's, uh, you know, certain things that certain glitches that are allowed, but not allowed. To, so there's a bunch of different ones. And obviously a sub four minute run is probably using any percent, which basically means anything possible to get to the end of the game. So there are speed running categories that fit your criteria of a speed run, which is just not glitching out the game. But why do glitching the game count as a speed run? Well, because it takes a lot of skill. Believe it or not, not everybody can perform the glitches at the right time. In fact, sometimes there's a lot of RNG. Even with glitches in Ocarina of Time, there is some RNG that can affect the speed of your run. So the whole point is obviously from the moment you boot up the game to the end credits, what's the fastest way you can get there? And yeah, glitches are the fastest way you can get there in general with most games. But it takes a lot of skill and it takes hundreds, sometimes thousands of hours of practice. I know several people in the Zelda speedrunning community, or at least I used to, and oh man, I've interviewed a few of them. Like It takes them, I mean, they're dedicating it like it's a full-time job. That's how long it takes to get good at this. So people always think, well, you're not spending a lot of time playing the game. Actually, they've probably played the game forwards and backwards more times than you can even imagine so they can maximize their runs and perfect the glitches. There's so many mistakes that get made. Most runs a speedrunner does gets completely tossed out before they even get to the end because of those mistakes or because the RNG factor of certain glitches didn't work out in their favor or they messed up the exact button combo or messed up the frame timing because a lot of glitches are literally specific to timing frames which good luck most people can't catch the right frame to do these glitches i'm telling you the insane amount of practice it takes so the type of speed runs you might prefer loki yes they do exist they're just in a different category all right but again he's not he's not someone i want to focus too much on that just kind of gives an explanation of why it's considered a speed run because you're still going as fast as you can to the end of the game you're just doing certain things uh that a lot of people can't do because it's, they're, they're difficult now now going to the IGN tweet, and we'll just focus on that because going to IGN's website and reading the comment section is a bit of a... <sighs> it makes Twitter look like a friendly place. <laughs> um, what I, I don't I, I don't understand is like, just looking at some of these comments, glitch speed runs are as bad as the shit levels in Mario Maker 1 and 2, low effort and not fun to interact with, says Zarl-100% Cotton. I don't understand that remark because... What they're saying is that, one, it's low effort, which they're not. They're extremely high effort. It takes so much skill to do them. It shows a complete lack of knowledge of what it takes to be a speedrunner. Um, and then not fun to interact with. Clearly, the people doing it are having a good time. There's a lot of passion around the idea of speedrunning. So while it's not for everybody, and to you it might not have an appeal, clearly the person doing it's enjoying it. I've, I've seen several speedrunners really happy even if they can't get world records really happy with their runs um, and doing them on live stream even and really enjoying the interaction with the community after the run is complete because oftentimes they're so focused on the run they can't interact with the chat but then when they get to a point where they mess it up and they have to restart or they get to the end and they log the time then they start interacting with the chat between runs so it can be really entertaining for a lot of people hello awesome games done quick there's literally an entire streaming event in the video game space built around doing these games as fast as possible which involve glitches so like clearly there's a huge audience out there for doing these types of speed runs even if they're not entertaining to you so salvation og responds and says it's not beating a game if you take shortcuts um, so obviously people are going to have their personal opinions on what counts as beating a game but like a lot of games have shortcuts as an example does it not count as beating breath of the wild if once you get out of the starting area, you go directly to Ganon and win, does that not count as beating the game? Now, you can argue that's different because that's an intended mechanic of the game. The game allows you to do that. But look at, you're skipping basically a vast majority of the game when you do that. So by definition, that feels like a very similar thing. Uh, so I, I honestly don't understand that complaint. Um, again, your personal opinion is that it doesn't count, and that's fine. There are speed runs, by the way. There's 100% speed runs where you have to 100% the game without glitches. So there are, um, you know, the kind of runs that you're into, but why are we so judgmental of the way people play? 
I feel like that's my general response to all this is, why do we care how other people are playing the game just because they don't play it the way we want them to? I do not care how you play your game. Heck, I don't care if you're playing it on an emulator on your computer. Doesn't bother me one bit. It has nothing to do with me. If you hacked Age of Empires 4 and are playing it for free, what does that have to do with me playing it through Game Pass? Nothing. If you're someone who is speed running your way through Echo the Dolphin on the Genesis app on, on Switch and you're breaking the game to do it, how does that affect me? It doesn't. You're allowed to enjoy that experience in the way that you want, just like I'm allowed to enjoy it in the way I want. So why do we have to be so judgmental of how other people choose to enjoy games? Who are we to tell others how to have fun? See how kind of dumb that sounds? Imagine trying to tell your child what they like and don't like. Like, I have three children. Good luck telling them what they like and don't like. They know. <laughs> um, other comments, you know, why rush playing a very good game? And then this one person responds, uh, that was by Daniel Hewitt, and, and uh, Hussam Violet responds, says, you seriously think speedrunners don't have casual playthroughs first because they, because they do play the games they run and they continue to speedrun these games because of how fun they were which bam, that's a really great response because speedrunners have played through these games more times than you can even imagine. Speedrunners for Breath of the Wild, as an example, have probably put in well over 50,000 hours into Breath of the Wild and have so many completions, including on master mode, that it would make you sick to your stomach how much time they've spent with the game. But it's the love of the games that makes them want to do it. Again, speedrunning is not going to be for everyone, but the ones that do it, they really usually love that game and know it backwards and forwards and already have experienced all the things that you're acting like they don't experience because guess what you can't be a speedrunner without experiencing it because you need to master things to a certain level that's beyond standard gameplay and you can't do that without essentially playing through the game many many times that's beyond the fact that you also have to perfect your runs um all right uh glitching and breaking the game isn't speedrunning sorry uh says anon stark expo and quite a few people 492 people liked this comment uh, one, one responded and said, both are. If the glitches get you that worked up, there's a category for doing it without glitches, which what I explained. You have any percent, and then you have glitch lists. So, like, there are different categories of speedrunning. So, why are we so judgmental of this category? Who cares? Again, it doesn't. if you don't enjoy it, okay. But why can't we let people enjoy things that we don't? This would be like me saying... Screw you guys out there that think PlayStation 5 is the greatest system since sliced bread. It barely has any exclusive games. The big games are all pushed to next year. All of them are also being put on PlayStation 4. You guys are all idiots for loving PlayStation 5 and thinking it's the greatest system of all time. Or, or I could go, hey, you know, I'm really glad that you enjoy a platform that I happen to not enjoy as much. Uh, it's okay and I respect our differences. Why can't we be more like the second version there? Why do we got to be like, screw you, you're dumb, look at everything my system has, your system sucks. No, they're okay to enjoy their system. And you can introduce the things you like about your system, and you very well can give the opinions on the stuff that you don't like about theirs, but we don't have to be judgmental of them and their entertainment choices. It's like telling someone, oh, I really like using Netflix. Yeah, screw Netflix, I'm a big Amazon Prime guy. I can't, I can't support the big red, forget them. They put up that Dave Chappelle. Okay. Cool. And I could counter with really crappy things Amazon has done. Bottom line is, who gives a shit? Stop being so judgmental of others for enjoying a platform or a game or a way of playing that you don't. Man, some of us like to go skiing. Some of us like to go snowboarding. Some of us like to go sledding or tubing. Some of us really hate snow and can't do any of that stuff. Why does it matter? Um... Moving on, uh, speed runs that involve glitches or anything like that, I don't care for. Again, that's that's just a personal opinion. Nothing wrong with that. You can have that personal opinion. Um, <laughs> literally everyone in this thread, this comes from Mopish Quagire's guy. He put up a Sonic, a Sonic uh, meme gif. And it says, uh, let me see here. I'm waiting for the, if the restart. Uh, per to Sonia to elevate the alternative sexual archetypes of the marketplace with the fastest hedgehog. Shadow, what the F are you talking about? 
You're a beta male, Sonic. <laughs> you can't catch me in the fastest thing. So yeah, it, it, it's it, it's funny. It, it's just a bit of a funny meme. Um, this one says, uh, I'm surprised people hate speedrunning because I'm realizing it's the same crowd as I hate when other people play on easy mode in a game they bought. And like that's another thing too. Um, another common thing in games is that, hey, you know, if you're playing this on easy mode, like I, if I told if I told people I'm playing Age of, like there are some Age of Empires hardcore fans that if I told them I'm not playing on the hardest difficulty, I'm playing on, on what the game deems as the intended difficulty in the campaign, I'm an idiot, a scrub that doesn't know anything and I don't deserve to be playing this game. Uh, it's like playing Dark Souls on hard or trying to play it on an easier mode. People have this opinion that the game should be played this one way and if you play it in any other way, including on easy mode, your opinion's invalidated. Now, I will note when, when it comes to reviews, I would say there is something to be said about what difficulty mode you're playing on, but I will say I don't care what difficulty mode you play on for your review. I care that you notate what that difficulty mode is. So if you go into a review and there's an easy, you know, medium, hard, you know, extreme mode or whatever, and you play it on easy as a reviewer so you could beat the game in a couple days, but nowhere in your review do you tell people that's the mode you played on, that matters because that mode could frame your entire gameplay experience with the game. So it needs to be in context to what you experience. And if you don't give that context, then I feel like you're misleading people uh, because they're left to figure out, hey, what the heck is he talking about? This game's not out yet. Uh, is this what hard mode is like? Is this the extreme mode? Is this just what the normal difficulty is? Or is this easy mode? How do we know what this author is playing? And sometimes they don't note it and that's naughty on them. Uh, but this gets back to a, a general conversation point that people are allowed to play games for any damn reason they feel like seriously now unless it's impacting somebody else i feel like there is a moral um line you cross when you are hacking in online games that affect the enjoyment of others because you're ruining the experience of others just so you can gain an advantage instead of just getting good at the game. It's like an excuse to not get good. It actually says more about the character of you as a player um, and as a person that you're unwilling to put in the time to get good, so you're gonna rely upon having to hack the game to gain unfair advantages. Um, yeah, like if I picked up Call of Duty Warzone, I don't expect to be as good as, I don't know, Dr. Disrespect, one of the, the best you know players of that game and and one of the best fps gamers out there like i don't expect to come anywhere close to his skill level but like i'm not going to get any better by cheating it doesn't make me better at the game by putting bots on my computer or putting mods and all that you know amy mods and aim assist mod like not none of that's going to help me get better at the game and it doesn't level the playing field it just gives me an unfair advantage and as i get better and better at the game and I'm getting better at the game while using that stuff, it's making me get better in an artificial way. Uh, that's not good. And I have an unfair advantage that whole time. I would rather start by getting my ass kicked and then move up the, the ranks naturally by slowly getting better through experience. And this is the thing with speedrunning. People don't just snap their fingers and do four minute runs of Ocarina of Time. You don't believe me? If you've never speed run before, go ahead and look up what it takes to speed run Ocarina of Time in sub four minutes and tell me that you pull it off like that or that it doesn't take you a year, two, three years before you get skilled enough to even do, to even attempt a four minute run. Let alone a five minute or even a 10 minute run. So long story short, speed running is awesome. There's different types of speed runs. Speed runs are not for everybody, uh, but Hey, you know what? If a news report wants to come out about a new record being set or uh, the fastest time yet on the Switch for beating a game, hey, you know what? Take the story for what it is. You can voice your disagreement like the one comment respectfully did by saying, hey, I just don't, you know, this, this doesn't have interest to me. And that's fine, but let's not sit there and trash people doing something just because you don't like it. If it doesn't affect you, then who cares? If the worst effect you had from that speed run is a tweet on Twitter about it, did it really affect you that much? Maybe you gotta spend less time on the internet if you're getting offended over how other people are enjoying a single player game. All right, folks, I'm Nathan RoboJets from Nintendo Pride. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.